Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about a uh, high level learning system, higher than psychological or personal level. Now, of course, there are many, many unfamiliar and new phenomena that are um, taking place on those high levels, uh, such as you know art, politics. But I'd like to uh, start with economics, um, not because I understand this better, but because it's perhaps an easier thing to model. Uh, using the, the toolbox of neural physics, which is kind of the, the aim, seeing if the universe is a neural network, uh, what new can we say about uh, economical processes? Can we model it better? Okay, so um, in particular, the most important thing about learning dynamics, and if you're modeling something as a learning system, is to identify the right choice, uh, to make the right choice of the loss function. That's, that's, that's something we're gonna discuss today. And uh, the second big question is to see what kind of architectures are uh, more useful uh, for, for, for social systems, such as economic system, um, for modeling. So um, in order to, to study the, the any, any system, uh, you need to identify what are the relevant microscopic phenomena uh, that is happening. Um, now, from the point of view of learning theory or for or neural physics, there are two types of degrees of freedom that one has to identify. It's uh, usually called trainable and non-trainable. And uh, the three type of processes, boundary, um, activation, and the learning dynamics. Okay, so let's start uh, with, the, with the microscopics and try to see what are the, what are the, what does it mean? What are those three um, processes? Three types of dynamics. What do they mean in, if you are to map it to the to the economic systems? So the first one um, is the the boundary dynamics, as I said. Um, now in in um, neural networks, uh, the boundary dynamics is something that describes the training data set in, uh, in a biological setting. It's something that describes the environment. So uh, if we are treating the this economic system that is um, producing probably something, takes some resources and produces something, then this is the description of resources as an example of uh, input layer in neural networks and, um, and products as an example of the uh, output layer. But both of them combined, either it is uh, the resources, uh, human natural resources, capital resources, or the products that the system produces, we'll all treat it as, as a boundary dynamics. After all, um, sometimes even the, the resources that are being produced uh, later can be uh, the products that are being produced later can be used as resources. Okay, so now um, and the, the, this is this is actually the, the main point, right? So economic systems we have to really in order to model it we have to divide what is it that outside of the system when we are not modeling it using trainable variables and what is it that inside the system and we have to model it using um, the the trainable variables. Now, if there's no boundary, if there are no resources, then really there isn't much to model. And so that would be beyond uh, the, the, the scope of, of the theory, right? Okay, now the second thing, uh, the second type of dynamics is uh, internal to, to the learning system and it's called activation dynamics. And it kind of describes the flow of information through the system. Now, for example, you can have uh, resources in, products out. So that's... Uh, flow through the systems. Uh, now, the, the cru uh, crucial ingredient in this flow is the architecture. And um, the architecture is something that is can expo impose constraints on the dynamics, but at the same time, it can allow you uh, the freedom of, of uh, learning uh, and readjusting your architecture. So that is something we'll talk in more details perhaps next week. Um, but for the time being, we just are going to assume that the we're just going to note that if um, the system has too many constraints, so let's say uh, it's over constrained, then what it means is that it cannot really uh, train its variable to produce uh, good products. So, and uh, another way around, if it has too few constraints, then the products would take a longer time to produce. So, it's kind of in one case, it would be um, underfitting and underfitting would lead to low quality of products. And in the other case, it would be overfitting. So potentially it can produce uh, long, uh, good products, but then it would take much longer time. So it, it is, you know, the architecture, internal architecture of any neural network, and for this matter, um, economic system would be different, is very important, 
But even before we get there, uh, the first step is to identify what is the loss, what is the, the, the system is trying to, to optimize. And that's where the third time of dynamics. So the first, recall the boundary about resources. Second, activation dynamics about the internal dynamics. And now, um, or the flow of information. The second and the third one is the learning dynamics. And uh, the a crucial crucial step in defining the learning dynamics is to identify what is the right uh, loss function. And there are like two different classes of terms that you can put in your uh, system. You can put it on the boundary and uh, define loss function uh, through the boundary uh, degrees of freedom, which are non-trainable degrees of freedom, or you can define it in the bulk and, or both, right? Usually it would have both. Uh, and in the bulk, you can impose certain things on the already trainable degrees of freedom. So um, example for the boundary degrees of freedom can be, let's say, natural resources or human resources or capital resources, and then your learning system would be optimizing for that to increase the, the amount of quality of uh, human resources or natural resources or capital resources, right? To, to, uh, now, in contrast, uh, the bulk loss determines the internal dynamics, right? So, uh, and it tells you how should the system evolve uh, or how it shouldn't evolve. What are the kind of constraints you want to impose in the system? And we already discussed those two things are really important uh, for the final outcome of the product. Now, so choosing the loss function is what actually determines the type of economic system. And um, uh, it is perhaps the most important first step that you want to make in uh, uh, when, when, you, when you want to set uh, your economic system, whether it's on a micro level uh, or on a macro level. Um, and in fact, there are some obvious choices that one can make. And... Uh, in my opinion, those choices may not really be the best one. So let's 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 try it. Uh, let's see what kind of um, boundary terms people uh, can impose. Um, and um, it, perhaps actually those boundary terms actually define the type of economic system. Of course, the situation is a lot more complex in reality, and so I cannot we cannot say that just you know there's one term in any economic system. There's also this combination of terms. Um, but nevertheless, it's it's good to identify maybe uh, what are the what would happen with economic system if you would only pay attention to to one term. So, for example, uh, let's say uh, you want to look at the pure capitalism, where capital is the primary term um, in the loss function. Um, that's great. So you can go ahead and start um, you know, the system evolving and seeing where it will get. Uh, the, the byproducts of optimizing capital uh, may lead to optimization of other resources. So maybe if there is capital, then the system, uh, if you're trying to increase the capital, then maybe the system will also attract more human resources. It will be using more natural resources, but those would be byproduct. In, in the pure capitalism, as we define, the main term would be capital, uh, gaining uh, more capital. Now you can also uh, take uh, an opposite approach. What about something like pure uh, socialism, that where the social welfare or human is supposed to be the primary component in the loss function, in the, in the boundary loss function. So again, we're just talking about boundary loss function. Um, and then ideally everything else should kind of be a byproduct of all of the dynamics um, of the activation, then. at least in theory, right? So of course, either of those architectures can be poorly implemented, but that's kind of would be a, uh, an approach. Um, let, let's take another example. So let's say uh, pure environmentalism, right? So when the natural environment uh, or nature is the, the primary component, you can do that as, as well. And then you will kind of see that the other uh, components uh, may or may not uh, naturally be optimized, maximized as, as a byproduct. And of course, you can define a whole bunch of different boundary terms on both microscopic and microscopic levels. And I would just call all those economies whenever you're trying to optimize some kind of resources, uh, whether capital, human, or, or nature, or anything else, I would just call it um, a, a boundary, boundary economics. Of course, there are many other types. So you can, for example, optimize not the capital, but the flow of capital, not uh, uh, the um, human, but or well-being, but you know population density or carbon emission. You can you can come up with different terms, 
uh, what all those uh, loss functions or types of economies uh, has in common is that they're all boundary. They are not paying attention to what is happening inside of the learning system, but mostly what are the right, um, right boundary terms, what are the right things to optimize on the boundary. Okay, so now uh, moving on, uh, what I think is sometimes overlooked, although not completely overlooked, but what is the right uh, bulk loss? What is the right term to put in uh, optimization functions such that it describes actually more and rewards more the right dynamics within the learning systems? Uh, what uh, it defines the right uh, social connections within the learning systems? Um, we know from machine learning that the defining certain terms within the systems uh, are usually uh, very imp important and they lead to um, correct architectures um, of, of, uh, which makes some system learn better than the others. So it's really important to uh, actually look at the bulk dynamics at the same time um, with, with, a boundary, with, a, with the boundary terms. Okay, so um, now the problem is that we don't want the system to be underfitting or producing poor quality of products or overfitting. And so the question is, what is the right thing then uh, to optimize within the learning system such that it doesn't do either of those uh, bad extremes? So in other words, would be the right term that we add to the loss function so it rewards directly the learning dynamics on all levels, from macro to micro. Now, if, uh, there, if there, there would be one word that I have to describe, it would certainly be the ideas. So we wanna have a learning system that actually rewards the generations of new ideas, uh, new original creative, which uh, it, you might consider it as a, as a type of resources, but it isn't because now it describes the trainable variables and uh, it's a uh, described trainable resources. So uh, it's better to keep it apart. Now, um, it's a big question to how to simulate, stimulate the development of new ideas. Uh, what kind of learning ar uh, social architecture would be better for that? And uh, that is something we'll perhaps discuss next week. Um, instead, I'd like to kind of zoom in and try to see what is an idea? Uh, how does the idea flow from, uh, from the first step uh, when it was just conceived to, to the last step when it actually turned into the product. So I think there are uh, kind of four stages that it goes through perhaps with the four different individuals involved. So first uh, we'll have some kind of, you know, in quotation marks, we'll say genius who actually conceives the idea, truly original ideas. Uh, at this point, it's not clear whether this idea uh, will lead to some kind of product or not. Uh, and, uh, but that's the, the first of the first layer. The second layer would be scientists. They would take this idea and say, okay, uh, it looks like an interesting idea. Uh, nobody really understands this, but let's try to, to build a theory around it. Let's try to develop uh, a better um, understanding, theoretical understanding or, or experimental understanding of, the, of whatever the idea is. Now, once this theory is developed by scientists, then the third layer uh, engineers take it over and say, okay, so one, now we understand what this idea gives us. Let's build, design a product out of it. Uh, and again, at this uh, point, you know, engineers might fail and say, well, there isn't enough uh, technological, uh, the, the technology hadn't been developed enough to build this product now. So maybe we'll just um, table it for now and we'll come back to this later. But anyways, this uh, third layer is also important. Uh, and uh, presu presumably, now, only if engineers succeed in, in uh, designing a product, then we can move it to the fourth and final level uh, to manufacturers who will actually take their design and produce a product, right? So there's four, there's four levels. Uh, now, uh, I haven't mentioned anything about executives or anything about funds available to go through all these five st four stages, but it is assumed that those things should be around, but they are not crucial for the development of product. Um, nevertheless, the, the uh, generation of this original idea is, is very important. Now, what's the catch here, right? So there are lots of ideas floating around, but not all, all of them go through all those four stages. Well, some of the ideas are just not formulated in the scientific enough language, so the scientists cannot really take it uh, and, and build a theory around it. Um, the other ideas are too far-fetched, right? You cannot really, you know, see how 
uh, the discovery of Higgs boson going to benefit the society right now, right here, or some of the uh, development in high energy physics or cosmology, how it, they will lead to a product. Well, uh, maybe not immediately, but in the long run, uh, some kind of ideas that uh, were circulating around theoretical physics or cosmology can make it way and lead to other ideas that can uh, generate uh, products. So now uh, here I'm probably making a, a soft point that the, the generation of your ideas um, is probably correlated with the uh, pushing the boundaries, scientific boundaries and education, something we'll discuss later. Here, at, uh, the main point, I just tried to outline that this four stages that you go through uh, from you know, geniuses to, who conceive the ideas to manufacturers to produce uh, the final products, this, this whole flow uh, necessarily implies that there has to be this, you know, at least four, maybe more layers um, in, the, in the social structure of the economic system. Now, uh, we'll talk about this uh, scales and this levels in economic system um, next week, uh, but it is important to note that uh, there, there will, just as disclosure, there will be some kind of what I call criticality in this state. The state will probably be close to the critical state or uh, scale-free state uh, of the social connections. Now, if you don't have that, if you don't have a criticality, if you don't have uh, many levels, then the system may just not be able, capable of uh, taking the products through all those uh, levels uh, in its development. Um, well, uh, but the question then will arise, and again, we'll talk about more about this next time, whether um, you can impose correct constraint on the social connections within the economic system such that such flow of ideas from their, uh, from be them being conceived to, to actual product are uh, rewarded. Can you create an architecture where this uh, multi-levelness uh, of the system is, is actually rewarded, right? So can you put an actual uh, term in the loss function uh, that does that? So we'll talk about this next week and uh, there are many uh, challenges and actually some of it is already automatically implemented I will argue in some of the economic systems but that is something we will have to uh, talk in more details uh, next week well that's all I had for today and um, I'll uh, see you next week bye bye